like an a sensor, emoji, a on, yeah, like an always <laughs> sensor, like you could feel it, but you could never see it. Or if it were like always you pixelated, you only see it on video. Yeah, like so you have to go back and watch to make sure yeah. that what you did was what you were supposed to do. Yes. That would be interesting. And Things always censored genitalia area. <laughs> always like Chinese porn or something like that. Yeah, like <laughs> it's like, always you know, censored. You, you meet some lady somewhere and you go back places and she gets you know, you know declothed and it's pixelated. It's pixelated. <laughs> like it looks like a eight bit video game down there. Yeah, you're like, what is that? They're like I have uh, I got mine pixelated that way. I got mine pixelated. <laughs> yeah, that way people can't trade it for goods. Services. <laughs> <laughs>
the squad, they have some really good athletes out there. Sure. So then we'll go to last week, week seven, which was the 18th. We had um, we were slated to have five games. We only had three. So 11 a.m. game, squad played Suicide Boys. Squad won 46 to eight. They just dominated the game. Suicide Boys, you know, they, they have a quarterback who can run the ball, but he can't throw real well. And it's like they have some pieces, but they're – they need more guys. He, he doesn't have a lot to throw to. He seems to be, from what I hear, a little kind of hard to deal with. I don't know. Maybe. That's just kind of rumblings I hear around. Rumblings? Yeah. And bumblings? Rumblings and bumblings. But, yeah. you know, sometimes you've got to be like that because I'm like that. So, <laughs> go ahead. Well, they have a few good players, though. I mean, I don't think the Suicide Boys are a lost cause. No. Pardon the pun. <laughs> Suicide Boys. Anyway. um <laughs> Patriots in a lost cause. I just think that they, uh, I think they need two or three more players that can fill some roles that they just don't have yet. So the second game, the herd played the Expendables. The herd won thirty to twenty-two, and I'll let you talk about that since you know you obviously played in that game. Uh, it was real. The herd didn't have. They had Andrew Allen. Play, I mean, uh, Expendables had Andrew Allen playing quarterback. Trey Green wasn't there for them. Um, I thought. Us, we played pretty good defense on the herd. They had a uh, a couple of long touchdowns, but they were highly contested touchdowns by you know making tough catches and running down the yeah. field. Uh, offensively, uh, we had a really good game plan and only got stopped uh, one time on a on an interception. I think. Other than that, I think they didn't stop us most of the game. So we had a good game plan for them. That's the you know a, a number two ranked team versus a four ranked team and. Looked pretty even pretty much the whole game. Yeah. I think they got a late touchdown, which kind of made it a little closer. But 30-22 to 22 was a it was a good football game, best game sure. of the day. Yeah, um, and don't forget that that game started out with basically a natural gas explosion on a kickoff. Yes. Colin Quartz, man, you rumbled the earth on that one. Yeah, pulled that flag. You set the tone for the game. It could um, be heard up in the press box on the camera. It has been recorded. That's the only part of the this week's games that has audio to it. Yes. Is because, it? well, Did I tried to take the audio out, but the computer, it was so loud that the computer couldn't delete all the audio. I can't I can't believe it. I need to rewatch <laughs> it then. But okay. it, it, honestly, you can hear it from the, it is, it is a rip and a roar that is unlike anything you've ever heard. So the 1 p.m. game was TakeOver playing Ghost. That was a close game. TakeOver ended up winning 34-29. Uh, to 29. I think Ghost might have scored a touchdown at the end that yeah, made it, that, that score. That score is closer than what I remember the game being, watching the game. But so. J.C. has a good team in TakeOver. And Herm, you know, Herm is like an unsung hero of that team. He snaps the ball, I don't know, 20, 70 yards. 20 yards every play. Um, I bet his arm is tired. And he, well, he throws the ball more than the quarterback does. He does. <laughs> he has to throw. It's not a snap, it's a throw. No, it's a throw. It's a be- between the legs yeah, throw. Yeah, J.C. only has to throw it over his shoulder like you normally do. Oh, Herm, Herm has to throw it Herm under is, his legs. Herm has been over and looking at the <laughs> second most attractive man that plays in this league, J.C., even though well, I know we disagree on that. Yeah, I think he's the least attractive man in the league. I think J.C. And I've judged every man by looks in this league, <laughs> starting with well, Walt. Walt's here, by the way. Where's Walt ranked in the handsomest men in the league? Number zero, if I'm zero. Yeah, Do you like have he's a zero. He's the worst. JC's the second worst, and then everyone else is tied for first after that. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, then the last two games were forfeits because Jack Boyce didn't show up. <laughs> they would have played the hurt. So the herd and the showstoppers got a win. They came away with a win because of the Jack Boys no show. The Jack Boys had seven no shows. Well, eight, six no shows. Six no shows and a kind of show where they they lost to the takeover. There was much because they didn't show great, early. There was great gnashing of teeth and yep. And what a what a season threats. for the Jack Boys. So okay, now we'll go on to the playoffs. Um, round one of the playoffs will be the number six seed Showstoppers taking on the three seed Ghost at eleven. Do you have any? Uh, what do you think will happen well, with that game? I want to I want to ask Walt what his opinion is too, since he's obviously going to be playing in the game. That with if the showstoppers show have their team, their guys show up, they can beat Ghost easily. Correct. I'm gonna say, but with the way Ghost has been playing and the way the showstoppers this season, if you put this season in a vacuum, 
I think that goes. I think Ghost can win that game easily as well. Well, if you look back when we played Ghost, we didn't have many players, and we actually beat Ghost by the score, but lost because we only That's right. had six show up. That's so, right. Uh, yeah, even though we weren't at full staff, and I don't know if they were at full staff or not, but you know, I think we match up well with Ghost. I'm I'm confident we we can beat Ghost with the people that have a, you know are going to show up. So, well, I think other than your attendance problem this season, your other problem is you have guys that can play quarterback and play it pretty pretty good, yeah. but you don't have a quarterback. Correct. I mean, listen, the showstoppers are a lot better when we have Jacob Diltz at quarterback. Who? Yeah, who Jacob who? Diltz. Who? Uh, I mean, that's always been the been the case, and, and that's that goes for any team. The herd is a lot better with Matt Wilson at quarterback. Than I disagree. Than Carl Lambert. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather Matt than Carl. <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, I mean Matt, look, I'm comes, saying things at you. Okay, go ahead. When it comes down to flag <laughs> football, we all know that it, it comes down to the quarterback. And, you know, J- Jake's a good flag football quarterback. I mean, it, yeah. at the end of the day, that's that's what Jake is. I mean, he's getting in the realm of going in the Hall of Fame because he doesn't play anymore, so he may be actually a Hall of Famer pretty soon. <laughs> Has he hit his five-year mark yet? Uh, Well... <laughs> the, the rules are very squishy. Yeah, <laughs> we, we come up with... We, we, we decide when and how... And uh, yeah, if he doesn't play next season, he might he might just be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, listen, we got a lot of players that can play quarterback, and I'm thankful for that because that's that's a big deal. You know, outside of flag football, we have lives, and uh, you know, Jake does work shift work, so he, I mean, realistically can't be there for every game, even if he was committed. So it's nice to have people like Chris Cunningham. And Jason Williamson, and even JJ Garcia. And in your in your opinion, it's your team. Who do you think is a better quarterback, Cunningham or Jason Williamson? Honestly, like I mean, uh, like an honest opinion. Because I mean, those are your two choices, really. I think I think Cun is a better quarterback, and uh, I think that's why we go with Cunningham ninety percent of the time. I think Jason Jason's a better wide receiver. Oh yeah, well. Listen, that yeah, that's a tough I mean, one because he's just who's faster. Both, who's faster between the two? I mean, and, and to me, they're both great athletes, right? But the problem with Jason Williamson is he's—I don't know how tall he is. Six one, is that fair? Six one. Fucking. Everybody looks like they're six four to me. Than, he's, taller. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's taller than me. Does not say much, but you know he's six one, like all all freaking muscle, you know. When that dude's running downhill, it's hard to pull his flag because nobody wants to step in front of that. Yeah. And and on top of that, he's athletic. He can out jump half the field. And, and so, and he's a smart player, a receiver. Cunningham, great receiver. I mean, he's got hands, he's athletic, he can jump, he can run. He's a more smooth runner, running in and out of breaks and stuff. Yeah, he's a. I mean, so they both have, you know, their. Ideally, we would both like them at wide receiver yeah. and Diltz at quarterback. But when you can't, you know, I think both of them can win games at quarterback. But I think the team plays better when Cunningham back there. And uh, that's that's no offense to Jason Williamson. Please don't I, kill me. I, I, I feel I want to get your opinion on this because this is actually a pretty interesting topic. All this, I think, who do you think of those Show two? Showstopper quarterback. Yeah, who topic. do you think? Because we're, they've been known as the team that has a thousand quarterbacks. They do have a lot of quarterbacks. And, and now they're at a point where their main quarterback really isn't available. So what do you think? I think Cunningham's a better quarterback. I mean, I don't think Jason Williamson's bad. In fact, he's better than anyone besides Wilson that we could put at quarterback. And he's better than, let's see, what are the other teams in the playoffs? He's better than uh, anyone. Squad. Anyone in the bottom three of the uh, thing, you know. I think he's even better than Ghost quarterback. I think he's better than Connor Moore at quarterback. Um, I, you know, I just I, think I, Jason. Athletically, yes. Uh, I, I think I, Cunningham I, reads the field much better than Jason Williamson. Every time I've seen him, to me, every time I've watched, because I've ref a few games even with him playing, I feel like 
he doesn't get a lot of help when he's playing quarterback. Like I've seen him throw a lot of interceptions on tip balls and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't know. I feel like when he's at quarterback, he hasn't had a lot of help. I guess I don't know. This is how I remember. It may not be true at all. But that's how I remember just feeling uh, that he hasn't. He's had a lot of misfortune at quarterback. Now, having said that, I think that Jason Williamson is a better receiver than Cunningham. I think that when he gets the ball, he can score any time. He makes good pitches. He makes good decisions. He's He makes some of the best downfield decisions with a football um, of anyone I've ever seen play flag football. Like when he catches it, he pitches. He does pitch. But, man, he's really fast, and he's got these different moves than anybody else, and he can catch. I, like it's big. Yeah, yeah. This, they, they, they play almost the same. You have them both on, the, on two different sides on the end. And they do different things. They they do the same thing, but they do it differently. Jason does it with his his, his strength and his ability to jump, and Cun does it with his speed running by people. And he has great hands too. He can catch the ball in all different well, positions. Sure. They're so, both really awesome. Yeah. So I, I mean, just, I don't you know. I don't think they're. I wouldn't think one's better. I don't think one's better than the other because they do the same thing differently. It's like comparing someone like Randy Moss who runs and jumps. To Terrell Owens, who's more of a physical, physical guy. Yeah, that's what it's right. like. They're both Hall of Fame players and do things great. I don't, I don't think one's better than the other at receiver. Now, the quarterback's a different story because it's reading the field and throwing the ball and getting it out. I think Jason may be quicker in space, but once you get out of space, Cunningham's faster. I, I think Cunningham makes better decisions at quarterback. Now, down the field, like to me, would I rather? Cunningham throwing to Jason Williamson or Jason Williamson throwing to Cunningham. All day long, I'll take Cunningham throwing to Jason Williamson. I think Jason's better in traffic with the ball, getting up and catching the ball in traffic, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one thing that me and Jake talked about. You know, one of the best flag football quarterbacks that we've ever seen is that dude uh, for the Houston team that came down playing some quarterbacks. He's like, Matt, Matt Cakel, yeah. Yeah, he's like 50 years old, right? On the athletic scale, you would put him at a two. <laughs> but he just made great decisions with the football, and that's all, like, for the young teams out there, that's what it takes to be a good flag football yes. quarterback is to make good decisions and, and know how to read a football field. I mean, that dude made me look stupid one time. I, I'll never forget this. I was playing middle linebacker, and he ran a combination route that, that picked on me. And the dude, he just, if you can do that, you don't have to be the most athletic guy to be, quarterback jake's not the most athletic guy but he can read a field and he can pick apart a defense because let's be honest in flag football most especially in our league most defenses are running a cover three which is a single high safety at best you'll get at best you'll get a uh, cover two which is you know two safeties over top for those that don't know and then you'll get some variation with the jack boys which is a cover two four linebacker and one rusher when they got one awesome athlete at rusher but that's the base defense, and nobody changes out of that. And if you get a smart quarterback, zone defenses, there's holes in it. So you don't have to be the most athletic. You have to be the, the one that makes the best decisions. Yeah, and that's and I'm going to heap a little praise on Matt Wilson for a little bit because when he's, as, when, when he's playing game manager and running the plays through the offense and hitting here, hitting here, hitting here, he's great. He's fantastic. But – when you have a, when you sometimes when you have to force a ball or, or make a, 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 a over the top throw that you're you haven't made all game or especially when you haven't when you're you know you get older and you can't make that throw that you used to and there's vodka yeah, well that too yeah that makes that makes it different you, I would I would prefer a game managing quarterback that gets the ball to the guys that need the ball that are open and can get downfield than a guy that needs to make the deep throw every time. I want to throw it deep. I want to hit this. I want to throw it in that, that tight window. That's, I mean, all that's going to do, you have, when you have 10 yards to get a first down in regular football, yeah, you can do that. But when you have 20 yards in flag football, that's a big difference. That makes it, you need to take those five yards at a time instead of hitting those, try to hit those deep balls. Because then if you miss a deep ball, then you're at second and 20. You miss another one, you're at third and 20. It makes, it's a different, it's a different well, game. And with what Walt's saying, you know, with the cover three defense, if you can run that corner off and get it to one of your fast guys, yeah, uh, you are one flag miss away from getting 30 yards. It's more likely you know. that you throw a short pass and make somebody missing in yards than hitting a deep ball that's in sure. traffic 
or you have to be accurate. I mean, it's more it's easier to toss it to a fast guy that can run through people than throwing and trying to be accurate. Now, having said that, I think J.C. does the best job at quarterback in the league, and J.C. catches snaps 17 yards deep, doesn't even look, and throws it deep to a guy down the sidelines a bunch of times, which makes defense pull back, and then they do these really simple things after that. And it's just, like I said, I've said it before, he has this kind of figured out, and I think – JC's right now the best quarterback in the league. Well, they lull you to sleep by doing, you know, pushing you yeah. deep, and they throw it out, tip, drop it off to Jr. and he's running full speed right through yeah. you, and his flag's almost impossible to pull. And JC runs well too yeah. when he has, you know, when he runs with it. It's you know ugly what, running for him, just like, as ugly as his face. <laughs> but yeah, JC, I think that you are a very attractive man. <laughs> this is all Troy's opinion. <laughs> you run like a Welshman. But you know what, Wilson, <laughs> like a Welshman, <laughs> Wilson runs with the ball well. Now, well, he's always been a good runner, even yeah. though he's now bigger Wider. and slower. I he, think that works to his advantage. Yeah. I've told he's always this, been a good runner. And I joke about it, but it's like pulling a flag on a moving Morgan portable building. Like one <laughs> flag goes by, and it's a while before the day. Yeah. But when really large the oversized people, load sign comes by, and then the other flag is there. I mean, I, I'm joking a little bit, but I'm sort of serious because, you know, like Gully, Gully's flag's hard to pull yeah. because there's, there's so much space. And you're looking for that flag, but like you Blake know, Dugas, Blake, his you got flag wide hips. Hard you have pull. wide, fat boy hips, and yes, <laughs> yes, it's hard to pull. It really is because you turn when you turn your hips, it, the flag goes away. It really does. It just totally disappears. And it work, it does work to an advantage. And I think Blake is one of the more underrated runners of the football because there's not a game that goes by that he doesn't get the ball and, and make 40 yards on a play. Yeah, I mean, I'm, and he's pretty fast for his size. I'm, 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 I'm not really I making know. a joke. I'm being serious about yeah. the, the ability of the player. And, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty accurate. <laughs> so, okay, next game is the squad versus the herd. Oh, God, so, are we still, we're, we're still talking about this? Well, yeah. Um, so, since Walt uh, talked about his team in that game, I'll let you – what do you think about this? Oh well, this is a, it's a rematch. We, a rematch. We uh, we beat the squad. The herd beat the squad in week. What week was that? Um, week five. We beat them twenty to eighteen. Um, it was a pretty hard fought game, back and forth. Mm-hmm. We stopped them late uh, to, to get to get the win. I think we had a two point conversion. Or a couple of one pointers, whatever, to, to get yeah. to actually get out on them. So, uh, two pretty evenly matched teams. I think they're they may be a little more athletic. We're obviously a lot younger. Uh, yeah, but uh, well, we are much teams younger. Are a lot younger. <laughs> we have the oldest people and the youngest people in the league. That's it's a weird true. dichotomy. Yeah, but uh, that's going to be a fun rematch because you know your team that gets the win usually you think you would have the advantage. I don't think anyone really has an advantage in this game. No, because both. We, you know, when we played them earlier this year, both teams played sloppy. Yeah. Um, so, I, I think, I think the key to whoever wins is going to be is Rob Hawkins there for them. If he's there and involved, I think they have a much better chance. And what with, Matt Wilson shows with up with ours is, is how Matt shows up. Um, if Matt shows up average, I think we'll win. If Matt shows up having a real bad day, we could lose. I don't, you know, I think it kind of comes down to those two things. Yeah, and we've got those young kids that are just getting better every week. Yeah. And Lucas, Cameron, Colin, Carter, who's playing baseball right those now. Are all the, those are all the, uh, the, the reindeer. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Avery and, and, and Brock and uh, who else? Thank you, man. Um, you have Cameron, Brock, yeah. Avery, Colin, um, Carter, Lucas, and Gavin, and Ga- yeah, and and I want to say, and I might be missing. Co- I mean, Colin's flag pulling has gotten better throughout just this season. You can see his flag pulling has improved. Lucas has 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 been good the whole year about running the ball. He's he's gotten the ball more than anybody else. That dude is, uh, <laughs> yeah. Lucas fifteen. He's an incredible athlete. Like, yes, uh, that kid is so fast. Yeah, and so is Cam- like when we when I watch the videos. And they'll, you know, they're playing corner. And they'll throw it to like a swing back or something. Those kids come up so fast. Yeah, and they cover so much ground being it's so young. It's crazy. so fun to watch. And then, like when Brock's at middle linebacker, he he's like, what is he, 15, 16 years old? But he, he looks like a man out there. He's like six four. He looks like it's a giant. And he's a giant kid. 
Avery Pulls Quick. flags better than anybody else yeah. on our team. He's Mitchell, never done oh, it before. Mitchell. Mitchell's so tall and lanky. I forgot about Mitchell. He's so long. He's hard to get around because he's so long and lanky. Mitchell's uh, a great rusher. Yeah. Mitchell's, like, perfected that. Yeah, so we're. Uh, it's fun watching these kids just improve. Like, when we get older, we don't improve as much over the season. These kids improve game to game, and it's fun to watch. Yeah, we go downhill. <laughs> they're just every it's like better, a bad stop. Every week, like, we couldn't pull, they couldn't pull flags of week one. Now they're the ones that are pulling flags, them and Chad Norsworthy. <laughs> yeah, Bill and Chad Norris were. You're right. You know, and Mitchell. I'm sorry, not Mitchell. Carter and Lucas have thrown passes and Car- completed yeah. them. Carter's, um, Carter's scored by, he scored by running at quarterback. He scored yeah. by catching deep balls at receiver. He scored with that little girl he's dating. Ooh, sure. Hey, did you hear that, Matt? <laughs> but uh, but a little teaser for next next episode. We will have special guests. Wilson. I'm sorry, uh, Mitchell Wilson and others at all. I don't want Colin on this thing. Colin's boring, and he's ugly. He's just as ugly as J.C. So Colin's tied with J.C. for the ugliest in the league? Then Yeah, now that they're here, yeah. I forgot. To, I didn't put the kids in earlier. But <laughs> you put the kids in earlier yeah. for the ugly contest? Yeah, he's ugly. You're kind of harsh. Well, and that's me. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Colin, I think I you're... I like a, your bald head. I thought this was brand new. Colin, I think you're a, a good-looking young man, and uh, I really hope you've done your homework this week. You've got a great head of hair. You've got a great head of hair on you. Uh, okay, so... Let's say. I'm good. Thank you. So, you know, we talked about those two games. So, I'll just ask, how do you guys think TakeOver will do? Because that would be the next game up with the rest of the tournament. Do you all think they'll win it? Do you think they're, they're probably the odds-on favorite? I mean, personally, I do think, listen, this season's been a little weird. Ever since COVID happened, you know, the attendance has been a little shaky on every, on every team's part, except for, like, the, you know, the squad. I, I think they're pretty consistent. And they've always had people show up. Yeah, yeah, they've always had people show up. But, you know, it depends on who shows up for TakeOver. But you have, you have veterans like JC, and you have a lot of people. But, you know, me and JC were talking last time I was out at the fields about the people on his team who are ineligible. And there's some big misses. You know, Limbrick uh, not not being eligible, and some some other bigger. Which names. one, Daniel? Yeah. I oh, really? Think, I don't think he's played two games. Oh I wow! Think that's a, yeah, we wow, were, that's a big loss. Yeah, and and, he, and, and, D, and, D, and D, DT moved over to the Expendables. to the Expendables. Yeah, that's DT a, moves over to the Expendables. But you know, at the end of the day, JC's probably you know in flag football, and, and this is a great you know this can be a great topic for a podcast is you know like well let's more. let's use it yeah, we're here <laughs> what, what, makes, what makes a good flag football team but it comes down to the quarterback and of the quarterbacks jc is the most experienced flag football quarterback that will be playing in the playoffs so yeah you know well i'd say i would I'll, say matt's the most experienced matt most wilson's experienced. the then jc yeah okay, matt's been but, playing but, since okay I 2000 agree. yeah, yeah. He's the most experienced, but he, JC wasn't even born yet. JC's probably a better, better quarterback with the experience. I mean, he's a at, better at the moment. At the moment, yeah, and that's what we're talking about. That's at fine. The that's fine. Should have seen 2007. Yeah, I mean, two, 2007. Mount Matt Wilson was he, probably totally different. When, when the herd beat the Showstoppers in the championship of Kenny Kenny League. Kenny hey, League. Yeah, that was Kenny League. That was yeah, Kenny hey, League. You know how you know you made it? It's when people brag about beating you. So I guess I guess well, we made it. I only talk about it around you. Oh, okay. But anyway <laughs> And everyone else. Yes, I would say J C <laughs> and the takeover four and nine you know, a lot of experience on They're the also like the silverback gorillas or whatever. They have a, it says silverbacks on there. Silverbacks and they have a gorilla on their shirt and they're four nine takeover and they're the hurricanes. Hurricanes. Well, see, that's what you know, it's interesting. That's what Sean calls them. <laughs> but in the most part, it's going to come down to uh, yes. The, the original question was: I do believe Takeover is the team to beat. Because who would they play in the second? They're playing the lowest seed. They would either play. Uh, they would either play. They won't play Ghost for sure. They won't play Ghost. They would either play the Showstoppers, the Squad, or the Hurts. Right. Yeah. I think they beat. I mean, all those I think teams. they're better than every one of those teams at the moment. At this, as, if we, as, as we've shown up all year long, they're the better team. I just don't see. I, I can see the Expendables beating them, but I don't see another team if if they have their people show up, and there's not something crazy. 
Uh, they're really good. Um, so I, I just don't. I can act like I'm tripping and take out JC's knee or something. <laughs> like, I, oh, I'm sorry. I was rushing. I tripped and dove into your knee. I can do one of those. Or you could just. I mean, I've seen you play lately. You fall down a lot. You fall so down. Just, yeah. So, okay. Last one. We'll talk about the Expendables for a minute. Um, they're two different teams. Dude, they, they are, can win the championship they can, this league. Yes. <laughs> they, can they, can w- they can win with Trey Green at quarterback, and they can win with Andrew Allen at quarterback. They're that good. They're, they're that diverse of a team. Mike Bell's one of the best people with the fastest guys out there with the ball in his hand. He's blazing. He's, He's incredible. One, he can catch the ball in the middle of the field and then run at, past everybody down the sideline. It's so weird. See, I don't know why. Like, it baffles me. That why they don't run some offense where because they have a, a, a couple of swing backs because Allen is fast. Andrew Allen's fast. They did for one season. Well, when yeah, I when impl- implement your, when I implemented that into I mean, the offense, I know people <laughs> like blocking backs, but when you have an athletic quarterback and you have other guys who are athletic like Josh Hall and hell, I mean Mike. I know Mike's a good downfield receiver, but if you could just line him up in a duels and have him sprint toward the line and you hit couldn't him, you couldn't stop him. He's you couldn't stop him. He's fast. Yes. Um, so, I just, they go downfield so much. And I know Trey Green has a great arm. And I know Andrew Allen has a great arm. And they show it. But, like, dude, you could do so much just by throwing to these guys two yards down the field or in the freaking backfield. Like, have all your receivers run goes. Have, you know, have uh, Hall and even Mike Bell block. Turn yeah. around and catch it and just run. Dallas is good at, at, out of the backfield. He can catch little swing passes. He can catch out routes. He's a good player. That whole team is built, like, right now to win. It's like one of those teams that has everything built to win sure. as long as they're consistent. They're the most inconsistent, consistent team, if that makes sense. They're the two, se- they're the two seed, <laughs> yeah. but they're, they're still inconsistent about the things they do well. If, yeah. they would do the, if they would continually do the things they do well, Throughout the game, they would sure. they they couldn't be beat. I think, and that's I it, agree. And, and it, there's defense, and I don't I don't necessarily think they take defense very seriously. Flag pulling's an issue, uh, and, and being in position. Yeah, they you know, don't. Mikel's a good rusher, but he's also he seems like he, he gets a little a little lazy, lazy every now yeah. and then. Yeah. Well, whenever Chris Gutierrez shows up, he's a good linebacker. For I don't him. think he's been there all year. He hasn't. But when he shows up, he's a good linebacker for him. But when they don't have a few of those little core guys there that are into defense. They don't really play it very hard. They have a good – with Robert Gerard as their captain, you can't get – I don't think you can get, be more steady as a captain than no, someone like him. Gerard's a good dude, and he uh, – I mean, they've, they've come a long way <laughs> in the last few yeah. years. Like, they're – they're the second best team in the league to me. If we were going to list teams, yeah, I mean, right and by and by record, they are. They are. Um, so, I think they could win it. It just depends on which people show up and when they show up, how motivated they are. Yeah, and like I said, it's it's not about ability. They they have the ability to do it. I just think sometimes it's focus on doing it the whole game. Yeah. Well, okay, so yeah. I think that's a good um, playoff preview. Yeah. Um, so why don't we take a short break because I have to urinate, and then we will uh, discuss. During um, the commercial break when you play music, you're going to pee. Yeah, well, while this is, the music's playing, I'll be peeing. And then we'll talk about uh, what we thought went right and what, what, what went wrong with the first, uh, first league back from COVID. So stand by. Welcome back. My bladder is empty, but my heart is full of urine, which is a problem. That sounds painful. Is that what's going on with your father? <laughs> my, my poor dad. He's got piss in his heart. Yeah. Piss well, in his heart. that's what happens when you... Not in uh, his veins, but in his heart. Well, he has weird um, chemistry where 
see, sometimes your uh, your kidneys get recirculated, and you Into have your bloodstream, yeah. urine in your heart, and they have to give you a heart catheter, which then goes into your bladder, and then it goes out of your foot. He has always worked in urine. <laughs> Dad, I hope you feel better. Um, uh, but, Let's, you know I know that he doesn't listen to this. But, above a course, but, uh, I wish you the best. I want you to get better. Um, I hate that you're uh, having health issues. Um, we miss you at work. We miss you at uh, just in life in general. On the boat. We need you on the boat. It's on that boat. And uh, seriously, like I mean seriously. I know. Bubba is the, uh, he's been the life of, flag football for a long time so sure and for you guys that don't know i know this wasn't what we're going to talk about in this part of the podcast but as if you would trace back flag football in southeast texas my dad uh started a league like in 1990 whatever uh that if if you <laughs> if you could trace kind of the origins my dad sort of began that wing of flag football in southeast Texas. You had other leagues that were in Orangefield and other places, but my dad was, I think, the without him, you would not have the league we have today. So I appreciate him, and uh, he's had some health problems lately, but I, I think he's getting better. There's so. a GoFundMe for uh, Bubba Quartz and his uh, medical issues. If you'd like to to uh, donate to his GoFundMe. Like Ray uh, Carter on Ray Facebook. Ca- Ray, Ray Carter, C-A-R-D-E-R. Uh, he's on Facebook, and you can uh, donate to Bubba Quartz's uh, GoFundMe for his health and uh, hospital bills. Um, it would really, we'd really appreciate it. He's uh, he needs some uh, assistance, and that would really go a long way with him and us. Yes. And lastly, Dad, I appreciate you if you listen to this, and I'm certain that you won't. <laughs> but if you do, um, thank you for uh, showing me how to play football. I really appreciate it. All right, now on to other stuff. God, you're 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 you're, at, you're thanking him for your playing style. <laughs> well, man, I know. <laughs> wow, the bar's low, Bubba. Uh, you, uh, you did something there. Yeah, you have a grandson that can't pull a flag without shit in his pants, so, <laughs> you know. and also runs like a Welshman. Runs like a little Welshman. <laughs> um, so, in this segment, what we're going to do is talk about uh, what we thought was the best of. Uh, the 2021 spring league and what was the worst because this is our first league after covid what i'll call ups and downs the ups and okay i'll, I'll get a little thing for that go do that one more time ups and downs we gotta do it after i stop talking go ahead are you done talking yeah ups and downs okay that'll work um so let's do the downs first downs so, troy what do you think was the worst of the 2021 Spring League? Uh, Jack Boys no showing. Yeah, right? I think I that mean, was because they're the they're the perennial champions of the league. They're the best team in the league. And them not showing up after having an entire season off, basically the entire fall season off. And they come in. We gave the schedule out way in advance. They knew and we even gave them – they asked for a certain week off because they didn't want to miss a week because they had a wedding or something. We right. even gave them that week off, and then they still no-showed week one. Right. Showed up week two late after we changed our attendance, our, our timing rule of attendance. They were way late. They, they weren't were just late. Uh, they were like a minute late. They were 20 minutes late. 20 minutes late. And then haven't showed up since then. They lost that game, and, then, and be, they lost that game because of their no-show. Right. And be, we get the points – given to the other team because of the timing and then they they didn't show up the rest of the season so that was the worst thing about the f- spring of 2021 okay walt um what do you think was what do you think's one of the downs like besides the jack boys or, or do you want to comment on the jack boys not showing up well i i would say you know <clears throat> on on mine i would say the jack boys were you know one of the down parts of this year uh but attendance overall i think has been down across multiple teams and and i think you know people got out of the swing with covid um you know people do you think they found other stuff to do i think uh, you know uh, maybe their wives enjoyed them being home more i don't freaking know that can't be it (laughs) well 
you know, something of that nature. But, um, I mean, to me, that, that you know, the attendance of that w- was the down. You know, first week was bad for, for a lot of people for attendance, showstoppers included. We had five people show up. Um, Jack Boys had two. Um, they would still be in the playoff hunt if they could have just got two SOBs to get out of bed and show up, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, if four and people show up to we, every game except we, two, they would have guys, gone. it is very simple, and the the forfeit rule is very simple. It's just like the and the two. Been, and it's been there for a while. Now. Yeah, it's just like the two game rule. The the two game rule is there for the showstoppers. Because why? Because we have a freaking habit <laughs> of nobody wanting to show up for the regular season, and then everybody show up for the tournament. Well, the forfeit rule is like, hey, we don't want to be like another league that people have played in where you go up and you play the same freaking pickup team every week. So you want some kind of incentive to show up. And the incentive to show up is fear of loss. The fear of loss is the playoffs. If you don't show up, you can't get four freaking guys there, which is easy. Um, I mean, even on our worst day, four four people were easy to show up. I'll take How can you not get four people to show up? Then you're going to have a forfeit and you're not eligible for the playoffs. Or I don't want to say you're not eligible. It's a big, big deal because of the way the way we do seating. I like that we have rules based on teams. We have the Jack Boys <laughs> rule, Jack Boys rule. Because it's, the a, it's, rule. it's a forfeit rule. And we have the Showstoppers rule, which is you have to play at least two games to play in the playoffs because they were notorious for – Nobody showing up during the season, and then 40 people showing up for the playoffs, always. Was, Do we have a herd rule? Yeah, the herd gets every uh, every flag or every call on the field happens. Oh, to the, the herd gets yeah. every call on like the field. They are uh, they get the positive part. We get the positive yeah, call every right. play on the field, yeah. You're right. Because we yell it out, and the referees go, oh, that's the herd. Yes. That's, so they get the call. That is correct. That's a herd rule. Well, yeah. The JC um. rule is a team. They have the ugliest quarterback on the field. <laughs> <laughs> JC, I know that Troy is saying these things, but I, you know what? You're one of the most attractive men I've ever seen, he JC. See, he sees the truth in my eyes. He knows what I'm really saying. Wink, wink, JC. I like how JC looks. Okay. And I'm, I'm not even going to cut wow. that out. Wow. <laughs> what does that well, mean? I mean, you know, he's a, a, nor- Man, a normal looking I guy. Like I mean, JC looks. Well, I mean, Did you know I said that, JC? He was like, he had that tone well, in his I voice. Mean, I don't mean like in a sexual way. I just meant like a yeah, normal looking dude. You, you, I think he looks like a guy, and that's ugly. <laughs> so any man ugly. is ugly Every to man's you. man's ugly. <laughs> what about Tom Brady? Tom Brady's a handsome man. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> um, you know, I agree with you all about the Jack Boys thing, obviously, and Walt about attendance. That, that's another big deal. You know, something I think we could do better um, is for a while we had people wearing the same color things. I know this is petty, but, man, it makes it look so much better when you watch the videos later on when people are wearing the same color shirts, um, and it makes it easier to referee and stuff. And we relax on that this year. You know, we're just trying to get people back from COVID. But I thought that was lacking. And I know that's a petty thing, but you, know, you guys, for future leagues, I thought Ghost had cool uniforms. I you know, like the white and black. I thought Suicide Boys had it going on with what they were wearing. But, you know, it, it's just more enjoyable to me when everybody's wearing their team gear. Well, you feel like you're, you're, you're part of something. And look, there's no reason on God's green earth that people in slow pitch softball need to wear the same uniform. You know who's on each team. Right. But but you have to in Beaumont. In Beaumont, you know me, me, me and uh, Troy play slow pit softball pretty regularly, every season, three seasons a year. uh, Sometimes tournament ball, travel ball. Uh, In travel ball, they're they're pretty they're pretty lax with the jersey. But in league, you have to have a jersey, you have to have a number, um, and it just it, it 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 makes you feel like you're not part of like a just a pickup game. And, but as far as a referee, all of us here have refereed, me and Troy probably more than, than you, Cody, but yes. it makes it very, very difficult to referee a game when you don't know who's on which. And, and, and colors are a big deal. There's a lot of moving parts in flag football, and you're, at best, you're about 20 yards away from the play. At best. That's on a good day. Yeah, and 
I'll say this happened in our game last week. We were playing the Expendables. They're white and black. And Carl, we were we were green, and Carl was wearing a gray. The it was gold, that the gold, gold, the gold and gray. and black kind of looks like a yeah. gray shirt. And we were receiving the second half kickoff, and Lucas receives it and takes off running. And I thought Carl was on the other team trying to pull his flag. Like, it, because, this is because of the color. It looks similar. It's like, that's if you have the right color, if you have the same color, then it, you know who's, who's on the team. To me, it looked like it was somebody else on their team trying to pull his flag. So it, it's a contact sport. It's a close close circuit contact sport. You need to have separate colors. Softball, you don't need it, but we have to anyway because that's the rule. And if you don't do it, you get you actually get penalized for that in the game. You can actually get a forfeit for that. So it's a uh, it needs to be enforced more. That's that's our fault, but it need it needs to be enforced. I think we just wanted people to play. Yeah, and that's yeah. I don't mind this season, but as time goes on, we need to enforce. Yeah. It. So okay, well let's do our best. So Troy, what do you think uh, best part of spring league 2021 was? For me, I'm gonna just personally for me was the turnaround of the herd because of the uh, young kids that we brought to the team. That's what I think. It may me personally. Yeah, I agree. Um, I love playing with those kids. <laughs> like they, uh, you know, they're motivated and they're fun and they're fast, and I don't have to do stuff. Um, but you know, at that last game, I asked them. You know, cause we thought the Jack Boys were gonna forfeit. And I told them, it's like, hey, I just need four people to stay back. In case they show up, then we can say we have four people and take on a loss instead of a forfeit. And almost all those kids stayed. And they, like, just hung out at the field. Yeah. And they walked to Sonic. And they have such good attitudes. And um, it's made it really fun to me. Yeah, and, and you see how my reaction has always been, how I'm always down on us. Every, with the women, it's all the adults. I'm like, oh, we're terrible. I hate this. I hate this. With the kids now, how has my I, my mentality has been much better? I've been so excited about. I feel like more of a coach instead of a. I'm still a player, but I, it gives me that kind of like, all right, we're learning, we're teaching, we're getting better as a team, and my mentality has been better. I've been better on the field, off the field. At least that's how I feel. And I, mean, I strongly recommend you guys, if you're listening to this, um, if you have kids that are 15, you know, going to high school, get them to come play. Uh, it makes it really fun. Yeah. JC talked to me last week, and JC said uh, that he's sort of hoping, you know, he has a son that's, I, I can't remember how old his son is. I don't know if he's a teenager yet or not, but uh, he's hoping that at some point he'll be able to play in a flag football game with his son and his grandkid, <laughs> which I think is really cool. Uh, so, you know, if you guys have kids and they're 15, they don't have to be great. I mean, just go I've out there. I've had more fun playing with kids on the team than with adults in the last ten three, years, three, I'd say three or four years. Okay, yeah. yeah I mean, it's it has been really fun. Uh, so, Walt, what do you think? Best part of twenty twenty one? Well, I would I would say that you know the herd's got a leg up on a lot of people for for getting the kids involved. Leg, leg up. Yeah, they got leg, a leg leg, leg up. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, you should know. Um, That was, you know, for me, it's the most enjoyable part because, it, and and you can probably ask some of your players, um, you know, I will coach them in the game playing against them because uh, I think it's important for the sport of flag football to get the youth involved. Uh, but that, and it just makes it fun. You know, they probably feel better on Monday morning than we do. Oh yeah, <laughs> they don't feel a thing. They, they don't feel a thing. <laughs> um, but no, like. To me, that that was really enjoyable because you know I remember when the showstoppers first started. You know, Jake was 16 when he first started playing flag football, and so it just it takes me back to like, hey, maybe this can continue on because that is the one thing that not only this league has lacked, but you know, flag football in general in our area has lacked is the next generation coming up and getting addicted to flag football. And listen, for you guys who have kids who are 15, 16 years old, 17 years old, or even 18 years old playing high school football in the summertime or springtime, coming out and playing flag football with athletes like, and I know this is not playing now, but Danny Gore and some of these, you know, the Bronsons. Cunningham. Cunningham. They're, yeah. they're better. They're going to be better high school athletes because they, and not only that, 
even playing against the, the crappiest team in the league, they're understanding how zone defenses work, how how spread offenses work. They're seeing football. Uh, it's, it's going to make them better. So, and and like, if I had a son, it'd be really. I like. I'm, I'm envious of Cody being able to play with Colin. Like this, this are, yeah. it's a sport that they can share. It's really cool. It's almost like a, a father and son going fishing, which a lot of father and sons do, but not a lot of father and sons are able to play flag football. Yeah. And I think Colin and uh, the Wilson boys will remember uh, seasons like this and games. Yeah. Like, hey, I remember playing uh, flag football with my dad. And maybe, maybe that's – you know, spoken at you know you and Wilson's eulogy one day, but it, it happens. Some of the most fun I ever had was playing softball with my dad. Me and my dad and my brother all played together up until he got sick, uh, and that was so fun. We we would always pick on each other and had a good time, and that was always fun. He always had my back, always had his back. It was always fun. That's something that I know you'll remember for a long time as a as a father playing with your son no matter win or lose whatever it is you're out there you're competing with your son not watching your son compete you're out there doing it with him and that's 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 so fun to me and like to me colin's like a little nephew to me i mean i've known him yeah. forever and it's like hey he's part of my family too he's not but it feels like that and watching these kids grow each week and see their investment in the in the team they can easily just say I don't want to be out here with these old adults. I'm just going to go home and play video games or talk to my girlfriend or whatever. Sure, and like Matt, you know, Matt's kids play. Yeah. And I know he enjoys that. And uh, these other kids, like Cameron Thibodeau, his dad shows up. Thank you. Like Cameron's dad shows up, and he's supportive, and Brock's parents show up, and they're supportive. And whenever Avery plays, Jack shows up, and his dad. Like, it, it's so, so strange to me, but kind of wonderful that – these kids are playing. Their parents come out and support it. And it's like it's a little different experience than what we're used to because it's easy to get very cynical when you just deal with adults. Because yeah. you're like, these guys don't show up on time. This guy's a bad attitude. They're yelling at Sean. And it's like, oh, and, there's still people with good attitude and, somewhere. And I can still remember because I started playing at 15. And I remember my dad bringing me up there to play, you know, because I couldn't drive yet. And that was – I, I can still remember that feeling of, man, I'm out here with all these adults. I've got to be good. I want to show them how good I am. You know, it wasn't like a timid thing. It was like, well, let me show them what I can do. I want to get out there and play hard and show them what I can do. And I remember that. I can still feel that feeling. And if that's what I want them to – I feel they're doing the same thing. They want to show how good they are. They don't want to just be some guys out there. They want to show, hey, look what I can do. And But they're also playing within the system that we have. And they're not, try, they're not upset when they don't get the ball. They're not – Argumentative, they like you know. No, they run routes and do yeah, everything. They do exactly what you ask them to do, and it's refreshing because there's so many times you go out there with adults and you tell them to do something, and then they don't do it because they either don't care or they don't know, or whatever. These kids are doing exactly what you tell them to do, and it's fun. It's uh, I mean I've had so much fun just watching that progression each week, watching them get better, from not being able to pull a flag to doing it every week now and catching passes and running routes. It's exciting. It's fun to watch and. Hopefully they tell us to they tell us old guys to get out and, and kick us off the team one day because they've got their kids their their brothers and you know teammates playing from high school and they tell us old guys to get out of there. And then we can totally transform into the Muppets. Yes. The two old men we'll at just the sit top up in the just sit up there and <laughs> that's that's the ultimate plan for these guys I think. Yeah. Get these old guys out of here. He wants the ball every play. He gets the ball every play. He's old man. Why does he keep getting the ball every play? You even smell like an old man. Right now I do. Yeah, you do. Got off work and yeah. there I, mean, you go. I didn't even take a shower. <laughs> I was really dedicated to kill here. I had to. So, I had no choice. Um, you know, I, I agree that I think that's that was the most fun part of the year for me. I play on the team. But I'll, I'll give you all one more thing. Um, it seems to me that since we came back and played this year, that there were a lot more uh, joyful greetings and hugs and, like, I mean, I'm not trying to make this touchy-feely thing, however. Uh, you know, when we played the squad, I have never been happier to be on a flag football field and see Rob Hawkins and give him a hug. I was yeah. like, I haven't seen a student forever. He was the happiest guy out there. And I felt like there. that the whole year with people because it's been so long since we have some regular season. 
You know, like when I saw JC the first time this year, it's like I gotta shake his hand. Like I miss seeing people on the regular, you know, having the regular like lead go on every week. And it was just this like sense of normalcy that I thought was just really great. Like every time I see Darren Wilkerson, my face lights up. Yeah. Because he's pretty funny. Silky Wilkie. <laughs> Silky Wilkie. But, like, I like mingling with all these people, you know, that show up in the field because there are a, a lot of really good human beings that play flag football. Yeah. <laughs> I just like to see them every week. So I kind of thought that the fact that everybody kind of started getting back together and playing, and I can, you know, you guys will never admit to it, but I can tell when you're seeing each other for the first time yeah. that you have missed it. Well, think about it. We're all a part of this one – we're the – we're the only league. There are other yeah. leagues, but we're the only real football league, and that people go to every week. And it's our it's our thing. Even though we're the people that run, you know, quotation marks run the league. Everybody's a part of this thing. And if you weren't in it, then we wouldn't have anything to run. Sure. So it, we're all. This is our thing. We all do it together, and it's fun to go out there and you know compete against your guys, but see your guys. How many people stay after their game and watch other games? Sit on their car and watch other games. It happens a yeah, lot. It so, does. And and you wouldn't do that if it was if you didn't care. People care. They want to see what happens. They want to see what's going on. Uh, I mean, I'm there every day, all day, just because. I'm working, but I would probably sit around and watch the next game or the game before mine because I love I love the league. I love seeing people come out and play and have fun. Because what else? Because the other option is not doing it at all. Sure, and I I want you guys to know, and I'm sure Troy and Walt agree that we really do appreciate you showing up and playing and having a good time. And we only want to make it better. So if there's ever anything we could do better that y'all would like to see, send us a message. Um, we have email addresses and Facebook. I'm certain you could find us if you want to tell us. So let us know. Like, we, we want this to be a good time for everybody. And I know people kind of get focused on trophies and awards and other stuff. But what I'm saying is more of in the gameplay itself, if we can make the day-to-day experience better some way, we'll always listen and just let us know. It's so fun that getting out there in the, in the middle of the game and that first – first verbal exchange with someone on the other team that first one where you're talking crap to them it's it it's so fun and then it, and then it continues throughout the game with whoever it could be somebody it could be the same guy it could be three different guys on the other team but that exchange back and forth is so fun to me there's some people that take it seriously and get their feelings hurt usually on the showstoppers um, well, not you in particular, but there's one guy in particular that takes it so serious and gets so butt hurt about everything that gets said, and will throw your flag across the field instead of just handing it back to you. But just some people also yeah. punt footballs when they intercept them sometimes. Yeah, yeah. and that's what's fun. Like that's that what's fun time. about it is the is the the interact the fun interaction that you have the shit talking where you feel it, it feels so contentious and serious, but it's not at all. But I love that. I love that that first one. The, who's who's going to be the one that gets this, that gets something said to me and who gets it back? I love that. It's because you don't get that every day. You don't get that all day long. You get to do that at work. You don't get to do that at home. If you do it at home, you're probably losing the f- argument. But you uh, will lose the yeah. Argument. So you get out here in the field and you get to talk crap to somebody that has nothing to do with anything. It's just hey, it's I'm, I'm talking shit. It's so fun, and that's that's great about what about flag football. It's such it's the greatest thing. All right, so I think that sums our little thing up for – I mean, we've gone for 25 minutes pretty good. So, any closing remarks, Troy? No, I've had a – hashtag don't. Hashtag oh, don't. What's your remark? I'll say this, and I, just to recap everything, like, you know, w- one of the things I'm grateful for in flag football is, you know, the friendships that, uh, that I've made on, on the field – uh, you know, with people that I probably would have never have known in any any other way. And I'm not talking about, you know, people in the show suppers. I'm talking about people on other teams, uh, people that I see out in public. I, in fact, the other day I was at the gym. I was wearing my SCTXFL shirt. Some dude's like, hey, do you play in the league in uh, Lumberton? <laughs> I was like, kind of, you know. <laughs> like, you don't know who the hell I am. I'm out there all the damn time. <laughs> anyway, and, uh, but, yeah, it's – it. You know, there, there's people from different walks of life that I probably would have never have gotten to meet if it wouldn't have been for flag football, and and it's fun and and I enjoy the weird looks that when people say you still play f- football, what the 
freak are you doing? <laughs> uh, but uh, that's kind of been the best part for me uh, this year. I'm glad to see some of the younger kids come along. I'm glad people showed up. And I think for the most part, everybody had fun this year. I think it is that first step return to normalcy, and I think it'll get even better in the fall. Anything else, Troy? No, I know you're. I know what you're going to say. I wish you all the success. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs>